So we've got those two grooves. Work prior, turn into frags, and then turn into the two fake water districts. Same exact players. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment, please approach the lector and sign in. Murder Powell, Temple Boone, Tag Vice Chair, not representing Tag tonight. Um, anyway, I think I have more of a question, and actually I talked to Kelly the other day on the phone, and I appreciate him uh, taking uh, my call and taking the time. I was a little confused over the uh, the million dollar grant that you guys have for the Recycled Water Project. I thought that grant actually uh, was money that was being used to develop your new white wastewater facility itself. And Kelly explained that no, that that grant is only for, there's two proposed, I think two or three, uh, proposed pipelines coming out of that wastewater facility that are going to go to a couple of venues over here. And uh, so that million is only for those pipelines. And, uh, and from what I can tell from uh, uh, Paso Basin Committee uh, information, it looks like that grant has an expiration date of January. And I don't, I don't think you guys are going to be putting pipelines in, pipelines in by January, I, I assume. So I was wondering if, uh, is there an extension for these grants, or how does that work? That, that's my comment on this. I'm trying to understand how all the grants work, but I'm sure yours works kind of like the rest of them. So if I could get that information, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other public comment? Communications, please approach the lector and sign in. Seeing none, we'll move on to item six. Special presentation of public hearing. Okay. Um, any special presentations? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, on to uh, non district reports. First on the list, San Luis Obispo County Organizations. Anybody from the organizations here tonight? They're working with their. Oh, yeah. 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 And then we'll move on to item two community service organizations. Anybody here for them? Yeah. Shot. Good evening. Here. Uh, everybody. Shot and the Go Fire Fire Association. Uh, we concluded our annual firework sales. The sales were down, but that was fine. Um, we managed to raise enough money to continue our community efforts through the year, so we're in good shape that way. So we'll have a parade, and two parades, and uh, Santa visit. We are able to uh, send one cadet to the Allen Hancock uh, Firefighter One Academy, so he's going to be attending the academy. I think he starts the eighth, so that's his first physical uh, fitness review, and then from that point he goes in for four months. So we're looking forward to getting him back. We do have a blood drive schedule for uh, September 11th at the fire station. The blood mobile will be there. So you can come by and donate blood if you are uh, first responder, ex first responder, military, police. We will uh, give you, I will give you a point. I keep in my pocket. I heard one of our directors set a world record for the fastest amount of blood donated. So let's see if anybody can beat that record. But uh, we were over our go donation goal by I think four pints of blood last time. So we did really well. We're looking forward to doing it again. Other than that, I'll answer any questions. Did you say September 11th? September 11th from 2 to 6. From 2 to 6, okay. And uh, what is the amount that you raised for the, for the... Uh, it's not public numbers. information. Oh, okay. Well, is that that you're only... Uh, is that your only fundraiser for all the... That's the only fundraiser that we do. We're exploring additional fundraisers, so maybe next week we'll have something new on the horizon, but for right now, that's the only uh, thing that we do. We've tried selling sandwiches and doing other things, and it just doesn't, it doesn't work out. But it's just the, the economy of scale in San Miguel 
the average sale for somebody coming to purchase fireworks is like $106. We do you know that. Um, some tri tip sandwiches, you know, you're going to get 15 bucks, and right. you got a, a bunch of upfront costs. What is your uh, cost of uh, paying for a cadet? Excuse me? What's the cost to have a cadet? We sponsored him, uh, it's about $6,500. Okay. To, to attend the cadet. He has his own cost as well. That's, that's to get him his uniforms, uh, his workout clothes. SCBA rentals. The department is letting him take gear, which is set in the association. So we have some surplus gear. We can be able to purchase some new turnouts. So we let him take his old turnouts with them that saves him some money that way. He has to buy books, books, things of that nature. Right. So okay. like that, six thousand change. Okay, thank you. We'd like to send more than one, but that's all we can do. Okay. That was my other question. Okay. Thank you. No, I don't have Thank you. Thank you. Other community service organizations? Three. Um, anybody here from Camp Roberts? I don't see the sheriff here tonight. What do we do with you? That was the community um, yeah. service. Or the San Luis County. Okay. So he's at the, he's at the, he's at the fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there is one other for um, community service. I guess this would be community service. So if anyone's interested in going to a very, very large um, yard sale. So the mission is having their yard sale. And that's going to be um, at the hall on the um, hold on a second. It's going to be on the 17th, August 17th, and items can be dropped off at, um, if you'd like to donate, on August the 14th. Um, I believe it's going to be late afternoon into the evening that you can drop items off. So this is the hall behind the mission. And um, but if you'd like to attend, it's going to be from 8 until 1230 <coughs> on Saturday, one day only. So it should be very large. Okay. Staff and committee reports. See the file. General manager. I uh, don't have anything new for you tonight. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Uh, no. Don't. Maybe you have any community comments? No. District Council. Um, nothing for me tonight. Okay. Any community comments? District utilities. Uh, so you have my report. I don't have anything to add to the report. However, I can answer the questions from public comment if you are willing for that. Uh, the, the grant that we have for the recycled water line is for a single line from the wastewater treatment plant to the vineyards on the west side of the freeway. Um, that will be coming to, to the board next month for release of bids and the January deadline that was on the PDCC agenda uh, documentation, that was when it's scheduled to be completed. So theoretically, if it goes to bid in October, correct? August, it would start construction in October and be completed by January. And what's the deadline in terms of the grant? Is that there? So all money has to be spent by August 1st. August 1st, 25? At 25. So we can, we can bill after that, after June, but the money has to be spent by August, or April 1st. I think I said August the first. Yeah, it's April. 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 Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. Yeah. Anything on that? Yeah. Oh, we oh, oh, you still have something? Yeah. So our um, San Lawrence Terrace Wells offline 
what's the status of? So it's, it's offline because it has a radio issue. The well itself is functional, okay. everything is functional. I just need to change the title. Any public input on that? Thank you. Greg Rivera, I have a quick comment on this uh, water line. So, you're going to put in a pipe, no big deal, or then try to put in a pipe. So, there's going to be an RFP to get a bid to do whatever. And I guess the water is going to be, from what I understand, is going to be blended at the vineyard. Who's inspecting their blending? How do they. <laughs> And what water are they using to blend the wastewater with? And who's expending, who's checking the quality of the wastewater? And what happens if they don't have their facility ready to accept the wastewater? I mean, there's a lot of unanswered stuff that seems to be, well, we're just going to do this because we've got money, what I call OPM, other people's money, put in a pipe that may or may not be functional to do anything. Uh, just like a bunch of other studies that we have. So I'm just concerned with somebody's giving some money, we're going to do something whether we use it or not, and so be it. And I don't, I don't think that's the way you spend taxpayers' dollars. Any other public comment? I'll move on to Fire Chief Report. Good evening again. My Fire Chief Report is uh, is written with one caveat. Um, I didn't put it in the report, but I'm really uh, kind of excited about these things. We received, finally, a shipment of these uh, high-quality pulse ox monitors, pulse ox sensor monitors. Now, the nice thing about these are obviously reusable for adult patients with a little bit of cleaning, but we have this low, uh, cost consumable for pediatric patients. So being that we have an ambulance performance standard of 20 minutes, so from the time of dispatch to the time the ambulance arrives at your house to take care of you or your child, 20 minutes is the, is the threshold, that's the performance standard. We show up from dispatch to your house in under five minutes, so that's a long time to be with a screaming child and not knowing what's going on with them. With these uh, pulse oximeter monitors, we get heart rate, we get a, uh, O2 saturation, we can see the pleth, make sure their, their heart is, is beating, they're getting good pressure, and we'll be able to get baseline vitals. Whereas before, with the standard pulse oximeters, uh, we couldn't do that. You know how children are, they'll throw them off, they'll do whatever they can to avoid having something on them. These we could take to their toe, we could have a, a newborn, we could take to their foot. Um, even children that might be fishy, we can take it to their finger or their toe. So I think it's a very valuable tool. I'm, I was looking forward to them showing up. It took probably two months for them to get here, but every one of our medic bags uh, has one of those on there. And I believe we are the only BLS, that's basic life support uh, department in the county that has these monitors. And it has to do with my desire to provide a higher quality of service. And when you have the infant that are in distress, you need to know what's going on as quickly as possible. And, uh, if you have, I can pass around if you guys want to play with it, but uh, they're pretty durable. Thank you. Anything for you? Uh, no, just I wanted to say thank you very much for always going above and beyond. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's sort of a human interest story. What was the animal rescue? Uh, you got to be more specific, but I think I know what you're talking about. It was an animal rescue. There was a kitten okay. that was in the engine compartment of a vehicle. The lady left her house, and it was like kitten sprouting season a few months or weeks ago. So she got as far as the post office and heard a meowing. But we do save cats on occasions, tongue in cheek as that is. But uh, we were able to get the kitten out of the engine compartment unharmed. Unfortunately, it was a feral cat, so it took off. So I think the post office has a big mascot. That's what I'll say. Got a kitty. Thanks. I love kitty. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, I, I don't know if we get to it or not. I'm still concerned about uh, that uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollar trailer sitting down there in Paso Robles. 
on uh, you know the temporary housing unit and uh, I personally think I mean we're just peeing money away and nothing has happened in the last three and a half years and the lease on that property to where it's supposed to be going is going to expire here in about a year and uh, I personally think we just should stop everything until we know what's going on down there with that lease land uh, and so on uh, because like I said we put probably well over half a million dollars into that temporary housing unit and it's just wasting money we haven't got anything for it you know uh, just like the Wallace group and Kelly you know uh, we had a special meeting back in June we had already paid him $900,000 and he had a special meeting because we were going to be blackmailed and so they weren't going to do anything until we give them another four hundred thousand dollars. Well, I can speak to the fire portion. I can't speak yeah. to the Wallace Street to the boards. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Mr. President. Yes. <clears throat> so, to update you on the temporary housing unit, if there's no way we spent a half a million dollars because our budget was far below that. Um, we had a, a loan of three hundred twenty. Michelle has the accounting. Anyway, every month it's in it's in the financial reports. So. Progress has been made in tremendous leaps and bounds. We actually got a building permit approval, finally, after a seven plan check submittal. It only cost us $10,000 in additional design fees and $10,000 in additional engineering, plus some change, uh, because county standards, they've cha they changed the goalposts multiple times. But we do have that building permit in hand. We're working on the public works component to that, um, to, to, finalize, to finalize the conditions so we can have that permit in hand. The conditions were the curb gutter sidewalk waiver where they want a curb gutter sidewalk from, from the fire station to the railroad tracks. We said that was the same and we're gonna do that. So now we have a waiver for a smaller portion of the curb gutter sidewalk. I'm working on the bonding component for that. There's a couple ways to bond it. Uh, we could go with the surety company. We could do a letter of credit which requires us to, to post money into an account that will earn interest, but it has to be locked into place. So I would say within the next two weeks, we should have all those hurdles overcome, barring, provided that we're able to go with a surety company. And the cost is about $2,500 a year to $3,500 a year for that performance bond, just to satisfy the county's needs or desire to pull us, pull our feet to the fire from the curb better sidewalk for the future fire department build out project, which is part of our um, strategic plan. Our lease, has come to the three-year term, and we are exercising our extensions. So, and the landowner has no desire to develop that property, based on the fact it's going to cost them half a million dollars to occur a better sidewalk from the fire station to the railroad tracks. He's in no hurry. So, uh, Mr. Keller is very generous with his time, and uh, and I, I believe that we'll be able to continue that lease agreement with him in the in the near future. The goal, obviously, has been to start that project and stop that project in a five-year window. Um, with the planning department being as they are and the public works department and legal counsel going back and forth with counsel from the county to try to iron out the curb better sidewalk waiver, it's taken quite some time. And I have a letter for school fees that the County Building Department wanted me to go to the Paso Robles School District and pay school fees to the Paso Robles Joint Unified School District. This gives you a snapshot of how the county functions. So I contacted the Paso Robles. First, I told the county that we do not pay school fees to the Paso Robles Unified School District. We pay school fees to the San Miguel Joint Unified School District for projects within San Miguel. Anyway. They refused to believe that. So I contacted the Paso Robles Joint Unified School District. I spoke to Eileen there and she said, this is nuts. This, the fees are to go to San Miguel and I provided the exemption, which was the last item on page number two, which they didn't bother to read. So I provided the, ex the exemption, said we're exempt of fees, we're a public entity. She said, well, I'll just sign this anyway because it has my name on it, more or less, waiving the fees. So 
in the interim, I contacted the Santa Fe Elk Joint Union School District, had the same conversation with them, and they said they will sign the waiver as well and forward that even though it says it's addressed to pass over the school district. So my goal is to try to educate the county and hopefully they focus on where the fees are supposed to go. Because if somebody does a private project and they go pay the fees to the pass over the school district, what are the odds of the fees coming back to San Miguel? That being said, the frustrating part about that was I had a memo from the San Miguel Joint Union School District that was dated two years to the day waiving the school fee. So two years ago, I was looking at finalizing this project and buttoning it up and being to the school fees component. So we are within two check boxes of getting all those items finalized. In addition to that, if you read the report, fire chief's report, we have a tentative award from FEMA to do some work with the fire station. So we're going to read into what we can utilize those funds for for the future planning of the fire department, hopefully get that curb and sidewalk in place, have everything waived, and move on with our lives. But in the interim, yes, we did spend a lot of money and a lot of time, and we are upside down on that project. So we are going to come back next month with a plan to get right side up, and hopefully that thing will be sitting on the ground. Uh, general manager has uh, spoken with me, and we're looking at having district staff to the, uh, the grading work out there because there's no reason why they couldn't do it. It would save us time and money and that uh, we can do it in-house. So I think it'll be a great benefit to the community. If the board decides to pull the plug on it and not have a place for 24 hour staff and you do not want to have a sheriff's uh, station, a uh, station, a sheriff's uh, report writing room, 